Good morning, everyone. I had a few different titles for this talk. This one I settled with, but it was previously not starving for front and profit. And it's a small world after, all, after oil. So um, I'm a polyculture forest gardener, but my primary crop is soil. And I've been focused on growing soil for the last 36 years all over the country where I've lived. And um, the, uh, living healthy soil makes all the other crops possible. And it yields delicious and gorgeous like crazy, as you can see from this lovely crop of uh, blackberries. Uh, but the other reason I focus on soil is because the industrial food system fails to provide safe and secure nourishment while wrecking our soil, air, and water. So this seems like a short-sighted view, view of pr proceeding. Now, here's a, a quote from Bloomington's Peak Oil Task Force. Uh, it's called Redefining Prosperity, and the, ch it's, the changes implied by peak oil are immense and will require preparation and planning commensurate with the size of the problem. Now, we need to remember that we're not running out of oil, but we're going to be short of it. And uh, everything related to oil is going to be getting very expensive, at least more expensive. We're already seeing it, and it's likely to persist. We're at a turning point. We, it's time for a revolution in how we grow, harvest, process, and deliver food to the family and community table. Uh, in places where food is most produced is also where we see the most soil degradation and destruction. So this cannot be sustained. Our food system t reduces growers to virtual slavery for large, uncaring, and, uh, and distant corporations, resulting in work that is not playful, but drudgery, not wise, as it, as it reduces future productive potential, not efficient, as it produces enormous waste and pollution, not profitable except for a small number of privileged people, not peaceful, as it uses the material technologies and attitude of war and death, and finally, not kind to people or the natural world. Author William Myers said it best, slavery is, a leg is the legal fiction that a person is property. Corporate personhood is the legal fiction that property is a person. The most commonly used herbicide, glyphosate, reduces the availability of critical nutrients and death of most soil organisms. I don't know about you, but I prefer that my food had those nutrients in them. As it is, we don't have it anymore in most of the food. Plant pathologist Don Huber reminds us that AIDS doesn't kill people. It reduces our immune system so that other things will kill us. Glyphosate is the same. It reduces immunity and then is all the, uh, everything subject to uh, fungus or other soil pathogens. Glyphosates have also been linked to many kinds of cancer and food allergies, especially soy allergies. And we've seen also since the introduction of glyphosates a 9,000% increase in Alzheimer's. We have superweeds that scoff at herbicides. We have infertility and spontaneous abortions occurring at ever higher rates in farm animals. <sighs> and it's challenging. So, what and by the way, here's what happens, what looks, the soil looks like after long-term use of that material. So what would a food system look like that mimics natural systems? Here's some clues. These are just a few of the 400 different species of organisms that live in our mouths. Uh, it's a good thing, uh, and also, the organisms that live in and on our bodies outnumber our cells ten to one. Who am I? <laughs> Lucky for us, we'd be toast without them. Healthy soil is no different. A teaspoon of productive soil can, ten, can contain a hundred million to a billion bacteria, miles of fungal mycelium, and up to 4,000 species of organisms. Remember that. Next, and by the way, here's a little look at the links and connections. 
So remember this next time you hold some earth in your hands. A green thumb is not what you're looking for. That's the color. So the key words for this kind of change that's being required of us are relocalization and resilience. The goals are to increase energy security, stronger local economies, a cleaner environment, and social justice. The Bloomington Peak Oil Task Force had some recommendations for us. Plant edible landscapes on public property, collect comp compost and redistribute organic wastes, Remove barriers to farming in around the city, more and more. There's a, it's a great document. Read it. It's online at the city's uh, website. You may know this happy Hoosier as Johnny Appleseed. And at the impressionable age of five, I learned through the sleuthing of my grandmother that I'm related to him. <laughs> this made a big impact on me at the age of five. And... Um, it set the foundation for my adoption of uh, organic gardening and permaculture. My old great-great-great-great-whatever great, uncle ha has, has a pretty worthy role model, and it made a good one for me. His inspiring life begs us to ask the question, what kind of work would you fall in love with? Here's how we've been answering that question at home. This is five years ago. This is today. <laughs> Water is high on our list of concerns, and so we made ponds. And this is carpet, plastic carpet sandwich results in this. We've got our interns filling the ponds, and finally it ends up looking something like this, full of water chestnuts, lotus, mint, and much more. We're still interested in water. Our driveway has what looks like speed bumps, but we call them water bars, sending water to the garden. Where every rain, it fills up like this, the beds are on contour, it all absorbs, very little runs off, no erosion, it works. And I can get into the garden. Again, water, high on the list. We built a 10,000-gallon water tank. We thought, well, hmm, this looks good, maybe we'll evolve it. So we added on a root cellar. And is this child's labor or child's play? I think it's the latter. <laughs> so. I garden awful, uh, often without working too hard. This is a, a mulch with uh, brush and wood and anything else organic I can put on with a few pockets of nice soil and instant garden, planted the same day. Farmer, and, and again, here we see changes in the landscape. This is, uh, this is instant gardening, really. These plants here were grown on just a thin layer of soil on top of upside-down sod with cardboard on top of it. It's, it doesn't have to be complicated. A new coat of paint, a new porch, some solar panels. Our home is, an is now efficient, despite the 1950s uh, leakiness of it. <laughs> uh, farmers markets re are multiplying everywhere. Right? It's 16% from 2009 to 10. But we need to focus on reskilling our populace to co-evolve back into producers and shed that old worn-out skin of consumer. Homemade sauerkraut and kimchi keeps us, reduces our needs for refrigeration, but we need lots more regional and food processing and storage uh, for Bloomington. Here we have some folks at, in Burlington, Vermont, at Intervale, in a, uh, the, the crown jewel of locavores, it's called. It has uh, acres of farmland, trails, wildlife, native plant nursery, composting, but the aim is to produce most of the food for Burlington within a short distance, as most cities used to do before cheap oil made us very wasteful. Now, here's an 80-acre plot of land within this Bloomington city limits, down on South Rogers, owned by the county and potentially available as a Bloomington eco-park. We have a lot of ideas. I can't list them all here today, but it includes things like a year-round all-weather farmer's market, community classrooms and a farm school, more community gardens, uh, horticultural tourism, composting, a troubled youth horticultural therapy facility, was going to be a prison. Maybe a new home for Bloomington Hospital. What, what else can we imagine? Let's talk about it. Now, if freedom and independence is our goal, then why not invest money to reduce the need to earn further money? 
What would happen if we all came to our senses and made it a priority to spend money on everything that makes us less dependent on the wobbly economy? And so these are what we address in some of these groups. This is the first pr principle of permaculture. We can't do it alone and we can't depend on national agencies to meet our needs with one-size-fits-all solutions. Here's our new renaissance man, or woman as the case may be, ready to tackle a low-energy future. And in our previously huge footprints, let's leave behind wetlands and wild abundance as our epitaphs. We can do it. Want to help? Thanks a lot. <laughs>